G'day guys and girls, Billy here from uh, the great southern region of West Australia. Well guys, end of the day today and uh, it's been a really long day, hot day today guys, one of the hottest days at the beginning of summer, about 34 degrees Celsius and I'm just uh, watering the garden and the sun's just about to go down guys, beautiful evening and uh, ready to have a nice shower and freshen up and I'm just making a nice lamb's broth soup guys a beautiful lamb and vegetable soup I've only just basically started it but anyway or a lamb shank soup basically so I haven't even uh, put in all of the ingredients in it yet so I've got quite a few more ingredients I might as well show you guys just the rest of my ingredients some tomato cabbage and some tinned Beans, red kidney beans, corn, some more diced tomatoes, and some cannellini beans. So that's going to last me a whole week, that will. So that's how I like to cook, everyone. I like to uh, cook in bulk. So when I uh, make a nice meal, I'll make one meal, and it'll last me between five and seven days. That way, that way all I've got to do at night is just put something in a pot and just reheat it over the stove and it's uh, beautiful and easy and it tastes better as each day goes along and also just before I forget guys this is my beautiful little cat called Alfie beautiful light ginger male cat I know a lot of people don't like cats but he's a beautiful beautiful little friendly cat he is so he's about eight nearly twelve I don't know about eight to nine months old I suppose He's just a really good cat, just stays at, stays in my yard, guys. He doesn't really go anywhere. But anyway, guys, this is about um, a meat safe, basically using a meat safe out of a uh, a pet carrier or a uh, a cat carrier, a fabric cat carrier or a fabric dog carrier. So I've been using this for about probably I don't know, say three or four months. To dry my bones for beautiful Sophie, my dog, who's just over there. There's Sophie. Sophie! Good girl. And yeah, so basically it, it works just like a little meat safe. It's fly proof. You can see the flies sitting on the, uh, right there. Um, let me see. I do get these little tiny flies, guys. They do get in, the little tiny flies. You can just see them sitting on the fabric right there. They get in, but they don't do any damage like the normal, like the normal blow fly, those ones there. That's just a normal house fly. There's blow flies around. Um, here's one right here, just there. But they just can't get in, guys, and uh, lay their eggs. Um, they can get in if you if it's not done up properly. If that little zip's not um, it's left open like that, the normal blow flies and the house flies will get in. So you've got to make sure that's completely all the way up. And uh, if you're in Australia, um, it's like a cool guardy meat safe, I suppose you could say. Uh, it's just repurposing an old cat carrier, and it's just a really really great idea. So another good tip too, guys, just put a little bit of cheesecloth. I call this cheesecloth, a tablecloth or a cheesecloth um, over the top of it. That more or less guarantees that the flies can't get in. Um, so we'll open up. I haven't, so I've got meat in here, what's been in here for about a month, guys. Uh, you know, drying out. Not the meat in the front, but the meat in the back. So we'll open it up and probably let a few flies in. I'll show you. Right, so I use that. So I've got um, just meat in here, uh, drying for uh, so you can just see some flies that have come in. The reason I dry the meat, guys, is when I buy this meat from the butcher. This is just dog bones. It's really, really fatty. Some of it, and if Sophie eats it when it's not dried. Um, she'll vomit and uh, there's nothing worse when you have a dog vomit inside your house so basically I dry it out for two or three weeks four weeks until that fat there goes nice and hard and if I give it to Sophie 
she'll um, absolutely love it and she won't vomit she'll be able to, she'll be able to digest that meat a lot easier oh sorry digest that fat a lot easier and, and she won't vomit all right so basically i've got some um these bones have been sitting here for about a week but there's more at the back there actually hanging actually hanging there they've been there for about probably four weeks okay it doesn't smell guys it just smells like a, when you walk into a butcher's shop all right it's actually a pleasant type of smell if you like meat that is so it doesn't smell rotten or nothing like that guys there's no rotten smell as i say it just smells like the inside of a butcher's shop okay so the smell just basically stays inside the carrier okay just make sure you've got the meat off the ground on a grill or something like that like an old barbecue grill just so the air can circulate around the meat and dry it out okay so what we're going to do now guys is set up my camera and yesterday i found a heap of sausages so we're going to dry these out for sophie and that'll last her for <laughs> one or two months guys so that's just some nice sausages i found out the rubbish dump she does get fed really well my dog uh, beautiful fresh chicken wings um you know proper dog food biscuits dog biscuits etc got dog kibbles here when i do, do the dog kibbles i mix up the little cat kibbles as well and that way the uh cat and the two cats and my and sophie the kelpie the dog can just share this bowl so i mix up my kibbles with my dog biscuits Look for a big olive oil drum here. This big olive oil drum is full of dog biscuits. It's about half full at the moment. And as I say, I feed Sophie pretty well, guys. Here, Sophie, come here. And here's some just a, some chicken what I found at the rubbish dump yesterday. Nice little bit of chicken, guys. Was, 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 was. So I do look after my pets really well. So anyway guys, we'll set up the tripod and we'll cut up these sausages. Um, because they're all attached and we'll put them inside the old pet carrier meat safe. Alright, so it's just basting. And my soup's going along really well. So we'll set up my camera. So what I'm going to do, guys, is just take out. So I'm just going to take this out with meat. Top. And this here, guys, is two of these. This is an old Chinese steamer, old, probably around, possibly even a hundred years old, guys. So it's an old um, steamer for steaming vegetables, uh, dim sims, etc. I've got two of them. There's another one in there. Once again, rubbish dump finds, guys. So these would have been from when the early Chinese settlers were in Australia um, for their cooking and so forth so beautiful find uh, I found two of these on two different occasions uh, I've actually found more before probably two others but yep just an old Chinese steamer alright so we'll put the sausages inside this Also, guys, these sausages and they just don't taste as good as what they used to when I was a kid. You know, they're full of uh, artificial flavours, preservatives. You know, they just don't make sausages like they used to when I was a kid. It's all made in a factory, guys. You know, it's not handmade like they used to. You know, it's pretty sad.
So if you've got an old cat carrier, guys, if you want to dry your mate, just use an old cat carrier. It works perfectly. You know, just it's all about, you know, repurposing stuff. I found I find a lot of food out like rubbish dumps. This expired on the 25th of November, so only a few days ago. Only a few days ago, oh, I don't know, three or four days ago. I think it's the 28th of November today. So it's a good score, guys. It saves me, it saves me money. And uh, it'll be just like salami, you know. When this is dry, guys, it'll be just like salami. basically nearly full. So Alright, here's my other one. This one's in much better condition than that one. So this one's ready guys, this can go in for drying. And before I show you, I'll just show you the other mate. So this is the other mate guys, so this is just an old uh, chicken cage or something like that, a poultry cage. I've got some hooks, some garden hooks or hanging garden pots and I've had this meat sitting in here for probably about a month and it's still perfectly good guys, nothing wrong with it. Okay, nothing wrong with it at all. I'll do another video at the end and I'll show you. So we'll put these in here. That's one. So there are a few flies in there, uh, guys and girls, but I'm not too worried about it. I've actually got about a year's supply of canned dog food in my house, fellas. So I do do a lot of prepping for emergencies with the way the world's going. I've probably got a year's supply of cat food as well, tin cat food, biscuits. So I'm a bit of a prepper, but you know, no, no expert guys, just an amateur prepper. I've got enough food to last me for about a year if anything happens, like with Russia and Ukraine, uh, Taiwan, China. So I guarantee you guys, if they invade, uh, if China invades Taiwan, if Russia drops a tactical nuclear bomb on Ukraine, within you know hours, every single supermarket in Australia, in America, in the world will be stripped within a couple of hours, or the shelves be stripped empty. Alright, guys and girls, so that one's done. Alright, can you see that? So that one's done. Let's do another. I'll take the camera off the tripod. guys so we'll go over here so it works beautifully so some sausages for um, Sophie the Kelpie my dog even the cats you know cut them up into little tiny slices and that that'll take a couple of weeks to dry up perfectly guys and like I said it'd be kind of like salami but you know obviously not good for human consumption you probably could eat it but you know I wouldn't but if you're starving to death, there'd be no reason why you couldn't eat it, okay? As long as it's nice and dry. And here's the other butcher bones, what I get off Zane in Wajin. So it costs me about $3 a bag. I usually get one or two bags um, a uh, week. And I just dry them on this rack. And you know that'll last me about four weeks, guys. 
I also hang them on my clothesline for the birds. Believe it or not, uh, parrots love eating the fat, and uh, willy wagtails uh, love eating the fat, especially during winter. And also, guys, this is the other one, what I just showed you. I don't know how to open it, but it's a bit funny, this one, how to open it. Oh, there you are. So, just a couple of uh, gardening hooks. There's an old rusty meat hook there, and just some gardening um, hooks for hanging the, you know, the uh, coconut fibre garden baskets. And they've been sitting in... Uh, the dry probably for um, one to two months I'd say at least uh, definitely two months you know so you can leave them in there for probably six months probably uh, but anyway just a good way of preserving your meat for your pets everyone so I appreciate you watching just using an old big cat carrier or a dog carrier and uh, yeah you learn something every day all right guys Thanks for watching and uh, I really appreciate it. We'll chat soon. See ya.